um, I was just wondering maybe if we could do that right now for the things yes. that I'm that I'm interested in. Just to be selfish sure. here for a second, but you f- feel free to add whatever you want to that, obviously. But what I like looking at the uranium, platinum, and I- I'm going to sum them up sort of in, in from cheapest to less less cheapest because I think it's still cheap, so it's not expensive. But from the from the cheapest mm-hmm. to the less less cheap, um, I-, I would sum up what I'm interested in, and you tell me if I'm right or you tell me what your list is. So I think it starts with uranium, and then we go to uh, platinum, silver, gold, and copper. That sort of be my top five. And I would start with uranium being the cheapest and then platinum, silver, gold, and copper. How, how would you rank them, Andy? Um, well, I mean, one, you've got cheapest and then you've got potential. So, I mean, those are two different things. Uh, okay. You can be cheap with not a lot of potential or you could be cheap with a whole bunch of potential. So you want, you want to see what your risk rewards are. And I think uranium is the best risk reward. Uh, what I mean by that is you have large rewards and not much downside risk. Um, so you want you want that risk reward to be lopsided. Those are your highest, um, your, your best bets are the ones that are have the most lopsided risk reward returns. Uh, uranium is the best in, in that case. Uh, natural gas is also way up there. Those are the two that I really like. I think we're going into an energy crisis and an energy crisis will, uh, will, will extend towards all energy forms of energy. So I think uranium being priced where it's at is completely mispriced uh, at its current prices in relationship to where we are in the energy crisis. Mm-hmm. Energy crisis being that the inventories are super low of natural gas, coal, and oil. Now, the biggest opportunity that I think with very good risk reward also is natural gas because in the United States, our natural gas prices haven't really gone higher yet. They've, they're starting to. And if you were to look at the natural gas pricing, I'll just do the, the natural gas pricing here. Um, natural gas has broken out of its big long-term uh, basically trend or channel. And the rest of the world is up, you know, we're at $8 a million cubic feet. They're at like 35, 25, 35, 50 and bouncing around those areas. This I think will converge to that price at some point. And I don't know where it will equal out. Maybe it's $20, maybe it's 25, maybe it's 30. I don't know. But this right here, since everywhere else, if everywhere in the world, the natural gas costs more than the United States, and we're going to start shipping our natural gas out. Uh, and if you look at our natural gas fields, uh, we may have a year or two before we start to hit a peak in some of our fields. So I think given that we've broken out of the long-term trend and natural gas is just as volatile as uranium in terms of returns. I think natural gas is another spot to look at. So natural gas and uranium are both very good uh, spots to look at for potential investment. You told and- me that you think that they're correlated, by the way, off mic. Mm-hmm. I, I know that a lot of people don't believe, I guess me included, I don't know if I believe that. I haven't really thought about that too long. But like you, you tell me that uranium is related to other energy sources like natural gas and oil, all these things are sort of correlated. Does that, could you tell me more about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, 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 let me uh, go right here. So, um, natural gas is a driver, or, or is a is a, we'll call it the the fuel that that takes up the slack when renewables are not generating power. So they call it kind of the transitional fuel, the transition from um, where we are today till something in the future that we replace all fossil fuels. So natural gas is the transitional fuel. Natural gas being priced far higher has an impact on electricity prices. Hmm. So if 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 renewables aren't generating, we're burning natural gas in the majority of the world to generate electricity. If you've got an alternative called uranium or nuclear, if you have the alternatives nuclear and you've got natural gas that just blows through the roof and to the upside in terms of pricing, increasing the costs of all your electricity, now the viable alternative is uranium. Hmm. So, or I should say nuclear. And what's going to happen is if we go into an energy crisis, which we are, Uh, you're going to see a whole bunch of people around the world. They're going to start recommissioning nuclear. They're going to start running their nuclear plants longer. And that's going to have an impact on uranium. It's just delayed. That's Mm -hmm. all it is. So if you see natural gas go berserk, uh, what you're going to see, like in California, the Diablo Canyon power plant, Mm. they're going to shut that down. And now they're saying, nope, nope, nope. We are going to extend it. 
you're going to see all these decisions. They're going to say, get these things back up and running. We've got the, the plant there. Let's get it going. And you're seeing Japan, Japan, you know, recommission their, um, their fleet. So natural gas and the cost of energy will impact nuclear and nuclear will impact obviously uranium because that's what they run on. And the question then is, uh, as an investor, is how much uranium inventory do we have if all of these plants that weren't going to run longer are now running longer? And the recommissioning of Japan and all these others, that's just huge demand that isn't baked into the cake yet. That's immediate too, because we can talk about yes. France announcing new nuclear reactors, but that's in, it's going to take a while to build them. They were announcing until 2030 and then 2050, whatever. That's all great. You know, I'm all for it. I'm a proponent of nuclear energy. But a plan that was going to, like in Belgium, was going to shut down in, in 2025. Now they're announcing it. Oh, it's going to run 10 years more. That's immediate demand. That's right now additional demand. Japan restarting, that's right now additional demand. Uh, that is, is not around here, but I think it was go you, were, you, were, you were going to tell me more about the inventories that we don't have. So go ahead. No, that's exactly what the problem is. Mm. So what, what's going to happen is you're going to have an energy crisis somewhere. It started in natural gas, I would say over in Europe and Asia. Then it's going to spread. It'll spread to coal, which it's spread. You can see the price is going vertical. It's going to spread to oil because these are all alternatives. Then they're going to turn and it's going to be like, run these nuclear plants longer. We don't have the energy because energy, energy is life. Life is energy and energy runs absolutely everything. Energy is wealth. So it, it, if you, and this is what could potentially happen. If you run short on energy uh, and, and you've got these economies that are, that are starved of energy, what's going to happen is their GDPs will just stop. They'll, they'll go stagnant and they'll eventually decline. And they've got all this debt in the world and all of our currencies, they're all debt-based currencies. So if you've got all these debt-based currencies and your energy production slows down or stops, you can't, you can't grow the debt. The, those debt-based systems stop growing. They have problems. That's deflation if you want to put a, put, a, put a name on it. Or uh, there's no way to service those debts. So they just keep continue to pile in money. They keep printing money, which would be hyperinflation because you can't grow the, the, the products in relationship to the debt. So you have this problem where you're balancing debts versus real things in the world. And that'll get out of balance if you can't grow your energy supply. So it, they're gonna get very desperate from that perspective to grow GDP in relationship to whatever the debt growth is. Because mm -hmm. debts have to expand and grow. It's by design of the system. And that's where like precious metals, why I'm so attracted to precious metals, especially the physical stuff, because if you have energy constraints or if you have energy that, that has a problem, uh, you're going to have to run to something to protect yourself against currencies that are collapsing eventually out in the future. And I, I don't know the exact time frame. I'm just talking from a very high level, big picture view. Uh, so I, I, I carry a, a large amount of physical metals because if you have metals in the ground and you have an energy shortage, how do you get the metals out of the ground? Mm. They're stuck there. Um, and then if, if you've got energy shortages and all we have to do is just watch Watch the inventories in oil, watch the inventories in natural gas, watch all these inventories. And what you're doing is we're just depleting all the inventories to basically nothing. Once they go to nothing, prices go vertical. That's where they go crazy because people will realize that there's a, there's a shift in the markets. And when I talk about the, the, the ratios and things shifting and money flow shifting, money flows to where the biggest problems are because that's where the opportunities exist. I'll say that again, money flows to where the problems are, because that's where the biggest rewards are at. Energy is going to be the biggest spot, in my opinion, where all the rewards are at, because we have problems there. Mm. Money is going to shift from frivolous things that you can speculate in a, in a huge, I'll call it orgy-induced bubble of, of, of NFTs, crypto, of things that are intangibles. And they're going to all shift into things that we really need to survive. Food, and, energy, and, and housing. Boom, right there. Nice. Yes. So that is your rotation. That's where the problems exist. So you, what I'm doing is I'm using the, the ratios to validate that money flow and movement. And then I look at the big picture. Are we breaking the big picture trends? Gold is broken to the upside and just did a retest. That, that looks really good. Then you look at natural gas and that had that big long-term trend break to the upside. It means we're problems coming. The money, the money is shifting. We can see it. The volume's coming in too, which means a lot more buyers are coming in than there is sellers. 
And we're starting to see this gigantic rotation of money from these frivolous kind of, you know, the bubble type stuff. And it's going to just rotate all over into the things that people need. And would I be caught buying Bitcoin? And I'm not a crypto guy. Um, this is a very energy intensive mm. uh, item that people are speculating on. What do you think that's going to be worth when energy prices go way up? Probably not very much if because your, your, your cost to mine, your cost to transact, your cost to do all these things go through the roof. Why would someone transact in something that is very costly and very inefficient? Just my opinion. Yeah. And, and we're starting to see like these pillars, uh, the structural pillars of the market starting to change. And, and what I mean by that is the, the, the commodity, the commodities, if you look at the supply demand balances out a few years, they just go berserk. Like, like 2023, 2024, 2025, everything goes berserk. And the, the, the charts are telling us that. So we just have to take positions, in my opinion, and then sit in them and wait for this uh, to play out. Yeah. So, so back to uh, the original question, uh, what do I think is, is really cheap right now? Shipping right. is also another one that I think is incredibly cheap. So between uranium, natural gas, and shipping, um, those are my three top. And then platinum is also up there. So that's my top, I guess, four. Uh, and, and shipping, I think we could see a problem in shipping because if we go to this re renewable world, uh, the mineral intensity in electric vehicles and batteries um, and renewables are far more mineral intense than their uh, counterparts like internal combustion engines uh, and fossil fuel generated plants. Uh, their mineral intensity per energy output is also uh, way up through the roof. So they consume a ton of minerals for how much energy you get back. So if, if they are going to consume, uh, if we're going to replace these highly energy dense sources, very, uh, we'll say not very mineral intensive energy power sources, with far more minerals and less energy out, uh, what that means is we have to go through a gigantic commodity boom in volumes, moving volumes of commodities. In the shipping dry bulk area, we don't have the capacity to go 6X or 5X on our commodity uh, shipping. So we're going to get a huge squeeze in the Baltic dry index, I think. Uh, and then you're going to see prices move on up. And we've seen that uh, very well uh, moving on up. So uh, that ratio is like, here, I'll show it to you guys. This, this thing is ridiculous. Um, so this is the Baltic dry index in relationship to gold. And we were way down here in this gigantic bear market. And uh, this was the last bull market. It, it went from basically 1980 all the way up till the end of 2007. Then it collapsed all the way out of the channel. We were in this bear market where... Um, they were not buying ships during this time frame. We were at overcapacity. And now we had that nice kind of breakout. We did kind of a retest that was extended. Now we're breaking back out in the ratio back above that long-term resistance line uh, to the upside. And if you look at the, the, the BDI, <clears throat> the Baltic Dry Index just priced in dollars, uh, you can see this thing starting to move higher. Uh, I think I was on earlier with you and it was still way down here. And now we're starting to break. Mm. And the companies themselves are also breaking higher. And some of these some companies, companies what's that? What are some companies there? I, have, I literally have no idea. Here, I'll, 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 here's a leader, GOGL, Golden Ocean Limited. Uh, this is a leader. And these, 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 these patterns wow. are like textbook. So you get this kind of coming on down and you get a double bottom. You usually get a bottom there. And then you get another one that kind of slides right below it. That's a slingshot pattern. And then you move higher. It came into some resistance and now we're rocketing on higher. So that is uh, Golden Ocean Group. Golden Ocean Group has an 18% dividend yield. So you were talking about dividends and these guys are paying massive dividends. Look at the volume here. This volume is kicking on up dramatically. So there are certain areas in the shipping areas that there's a ton of potential, ton. And I mean, there's companies like Zim and uh, this one uh, is container ships too. So the, the charts are going to look a little bit different, but uh, this guy's paying a 46% dividend yield and has a PE ratio of like nothing. <laughs> so their, 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 their cash flows, if you were to look on a quarterly basis, they just made 1.71 billion uh, this past quarter and their market cap is 7 billion. 
seven and point seven billion. The 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 value here is off the charts for some of these companies, and they they a lot of them in the dry bulk at least. This one's a little bit of a this is more uh, container ships, but the dry bulk looks ridiculous. Looks absolutely ridiculous. The charts uh, and their bottoming patterns. So we've got uh, I would say a full a full alignment of the chart patterns in the individual companies with the Baltic dry index coming higher and the Baltic dry index outperforming other assets uh, from levels. And the Baltic dry index, that level that we had there was absolutely ridiculous uh, in terms of where we're at historically. So we're at two and the potential, I think we could go all the way to 14, which means that the Baltic dry index could outperform gold by seven times. What and do you you're think already bullish on gold. So if you if we have oh, a yes. doubling in gold, what is that, a 14x in shipping? It could be in, okay. in the shipping rates. Yep. And these companies have PE ratios of 0. 0.5, 1, and 2. If it were to go back and revert to a PE ratio that's more normal, uh, you could see a huge expansion in the in the shipping companies uh, from the PE multiple to the ratio to the to the multiple of where the Baltic dry index is trading and then the Baltic dry index to gold. Mm. So it's like this, this three or four ratio bet um, that I think is really good. And on top of it, they're cash cows already. They're, they're bringing in cash. Uh, uranium doesn't have that, that cash cow effect. It's not mm. the value play. It's a speculative play. So this thing, these things are, I mean, they're, they're, they're I'll call it diarrheaing cash everywhere. <laughs> they got it all over the place. And they're giving it back to you in, in the forms of dividends, a lot of them. Mm. A lot of them have the book value to back it up too. If you open up a yep. uh, price to book value ratio, whatever, you're buying assets on the cheap. You're buying ships on the very cheap. Yeah, I think uh, the barrier to entry in shipping is going to be is going to be rough too because they're very large ships. They take copious amounts of steel and energy to make. So if you're in an energy shortage or if energy becomes very expensive, uh, how likely are, you know, what are the ship values going to do as well? Because if you can't bring ships and make the ships very easily, and there's a huge constraint on ship making and labor, and they're all building container ships right now, not dry bulk. I mean, there's this huge barrier to get new ships made. So if you're kind of stuck in this scenario where, hey, we want to ship a whole bunch more commodities to go into this renewable world. And they're like, well, we could just build new ships. And it's like, well, you can't very easily because if you've got high energy prices and you've got you know, these huge um, steel consuming aluminum, all this other stuff that they consume to build the ship. Uh, you got to get all that material there. So it's going to be slow to make it. It's going to be very expensive. And the, there's labor constraints in, in the shipyards too. So it's like the barrier to get new ships in, I think is going to be, is going to be rough. And then what else? We, we, I don't really have any. We can go to platinum. We can go to yeah. platinum here. Platinum is uh, one of my favorite physical metals. Uh, and a cool fact, just a, a cool, cool fact real quick. Uh, I was talking to somebody who was from Germany uh, and I didn't know this. And hopefully what he said is true. Um, you might want to bounce it and look at that. But in Weimar, Germany, uh, the ratio of platinum to gold during that hyperinflation was four to one. Platinum outperformed gold in the hyperinflation is what he had told me. Right now we're at a ratio of 0.5, which means that this could go up 8x if we had some sort of maybe problem, if it were to repeat like, like that. Now I'm not saying that will, I'm just saying that's what someone had told me uh, that's from Germany and his research. But um, we've broken out of this downtrend kind of squeezing up pattern against gold. So platinum looks like it's going to outperform gold here at any second. Um, so if you, if you zoom in, we've got a little downtrend break on the short term. It's just been moving sideways, uh, but it's been, you know, it's taken some time and we haven't um, taken off yet. So it's a very low level. And, and we've broken the big picture view pattern. We're just waiting for takeoff. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for takeoff. And if you look at platinum to uh, palladium ratio, this thing is in no man's land, super cheap. Mm -hmm. So platinum will start substituting palladium. <clears throat> and that just takes some time. So right now it's undeniably cheap against palladium, no matter, it, I mean, that's a fact compared to history. And if you look here, we've got a nice good uh, break of this little downtrend. And again, we may or may not break out of this little area. I may have consolidated even further, but uh, it, it's looking really good from a overall ratio basis and how cheap it is. And then platinum to silver has a gigantic declining wedge. And it looks like it might try to break out here, 
Again, I don't try to predict the future, but it sure looks like it wants to try to break. This ratio is very cheap uh, in favor of platinum. Uh, so silver, if somebody says silver is one of the cheapest assets in the world, well, platinum is way cheaper than silver. Mm. So that would make platinum uh, the cheapest asset in the world uh, from that perspective, if they were yeah. to hold silver to be the cheapest. But platinum, if it breaks, uh, it's going to try to break on every single against every single precious metal. Mm. So I would prefer to own platinum <clears throat> over the other metals. That, that's me. Plus platinum, there is really no above ground inventory of it. Hmm. So silver, everyone goes and buys silver. That's all inventory that people can sell. Who buys platinum? Well, not many people do. And it, most of it gets consumed. Yes, it can get recycled out of catalytic converters and whatnot. But this is also the basis of a hydrogen economy. They use platinum. So if, if, if we run into mineral constraints in the future um, and we have to go to a different storage um, of energy, and, and let's say they go to hydrogen to store this energy, I think platinum would be the spot to to hit up. So I think yeah. right now platinum is mispriced. The problem that I do have with platinum is not really with platinum is, is how do I play it? Because a lot of these companies are PGM companies. So they're platinum palladium, but as you showed, palladium is not at all that cheap. So the stocks are not that cheap because they get priced uh, based on their palladium value as well. So they're right now they're selling palladium. When platinum goes up, they're going to be selling platinum and the stocks are never really as cheap as the metal. So it's sort of you, you either buy the physical metal or you don't really bother with the stocks. That's sort of what I found out. So yeah, that's, that's how I play it though. I just buy the physical metal. Oh yeah, like you, you, okay, yeah, 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 the physical. Yep. Mm. Okay. It's a it's a way to diversify out of the system. Now, keep in mind. I mean, if you look around the world, uh, there are certain areas that are having riots and stuff. <clears throat> they are mad and 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 they don't have fuel. They don't have food. Like, what else do they have to lose at that point? Because, I mean, they're just going to go out and say, I, I'm, I'm sick of this. I can't afford to eat and I can't afford to, to, to go around or whatever. Um, that doesn't mean that some of these you know, areas are immune to that. So I, I don't know what the stock market's going to necessarily do if people just don't show up to work. <laughs> if you don't get paid enough and, and, and I, I'm going to the extreme. I'm not, I'm not saying that this is going to happen. This is not a projection. It's not a prediction. But if if someone uh, has, is struggling and they're, they're not getting paid enough uh, in compensation to, to eat or, or to, to, to go to work, just physically get there. I mean, what's the point of going to work then? <laughs> it, you're kind of like, well, okay, I'm going to stop going to work. Now, what happens to all these companies? I mean, or they're just going to pay a lot more money to keep them. So, I mean, I, it's kind of like a, a safety against a, a bad outcome. If we have riots, we're seeing it around the world in certain countries. Maybe it comes to other countries. I don't necessarily know, but I think platinum in terms of its inflation protection and its ability to be used in a lot of these products that are coming in the future, like hydrogen stuff. Um, I just think it's a good, it's a good bet for a long-term play.